Welcome to the Unlist. Today we are talking about Murdoch, a brand that gets almost no love at all in the online fragrance community. And it's really weird because they've been around since 2006. They've had fragrances since 2009. And like each one of their fragrances on Fragrantica has like maybe five reviews, which for that site is a piss poor amount. <laughs> and like nobody on Base Notes talks about them at all. Any thread I find on them is like at least 10, 15 years old minimum. And just no one ever has anything to say about them. Especially not YouTubers or influencers, people on Instagram, nothing. Well, part of that has to do with the fact that Murdoch seems to be almost uh, British to a fault. They are a British barbershop brand that really thinks and acts locally. They really couldn't be arsed about what's going on in uh, you know, California or what the people in China are doing or what the cool thing to do in the Middle East is. They're just not concerned with any of that. They are a London-based barbershop, a very small chain of barbershops located in and around London. And that's what they focus on serving, case closed. Therefore, they don't make it rain on influencers they don't give free bottles to everyone. They are not trying to play that game for online clout, which means all the hype beast people with their riz and their bricks and you know all that stuff and their drip, they're not all bricked up. They're not rizzed out. <laughs> they don't care about any of that, <laughs> okay? So unfortunately, it takes a guy like me with nothing to lose to actually waste time doing a video on a brand that's not going to get me any views or any clicks or any subscriptions or anything because it's just not a hype brand because the brand's not trying to be one. Now, what I do find really uh, unique about Murdoch is Murdoch doesn't pretend to be an old brand, but they just pick up the reins of a more traditional older brand. They looked at the local London diaspora and said, there is a need here that has been vacated by other brands being bought by corporations, being reconfigured. Penhaligans, for example, no longer a barbershop. All of their old barbershop locations that remained were converted into perfume boutiques and the chairs taken out and the barbers all sent packing down the road, just like that, kicked down the road. There's my foot in case you saw it. You know, get out of here. We don't need you. All we care about is perfume now. And then a lot of their classic barbershop fragrances also discontinued. English Fern gone. Doro gone. Hamam Bouquet gone. All they care about now are all these really stupid ouds, these British ouds or whatever. But they're trying to really appeal to a whole different market than what they started. And it's kind of sad. And then, you know, Joe F. Trumper is still hanging in there. They still have barbershops. They're still quite popular in the uh, local area. But, you know, the Crown Perfumery is gone. Florist is still around, but they're not a barber. D.H. Harris is an apothecary. So they are around, and they create barber products, but you can't go in there and get a haircut. You can get your prescription filled, though. Pharmacy, because that's what an apothecary is. So there's a need. There is, there is definitely a need. And uh, the founder of Murdoch won... Uh, Brendan Murdoch, surprise, surprise, back in 2006, decided, hey, well, let's pick up the reins. Let's pick up where Penhaligans left off. Let's pick up where a lot of these older brands that have been diminished from the public eye have left off, you know? And thus, they have this aesthetic of being this old Victorian slash Edwardian era gentlemanly uh, barbershop, this men's barbershop that will give you a straight cut and a shave, polish your brogues for you, and send you out looking neat and tidy, right? Very simple. I mean, Sweeney Todd, that whole thing <laughs> is about that, except darker and bloodier, obviously. So that's what Murdoch is trying to supply. And uh, they had at their peak about five boutiques you know, in and around London. But after the pandemic, a couple of them closed. So they only have three now. But they have a satellite location in the United States. It's located in the uh, New York City Nordstrom. 
So if you are in the U.S. and you have the money to fly out there, I don't. Clearly, I don't. But if you do, you can figure out what a Murdoch haircut's like, what it's all about. You know, maybe you can get some brogues or some wingtips and go in there and get them shoe shine for you too. Now, the fragrances themselves, they do have that classic Floris and D.H. Harris and Penhaligon's G.F. Trumper vibe. So we're talking dry woods. We're talking very bracing, not sweet, not musky, not floral. Everything you expect from a men's grooming brand that would be over a century and a half old. Everything you'd expect from a 150 plus year old brand, but the brand's not that old. Like I said, 2006 is when they started. They're not trying to pretend like they were around back then. They're not doing an eight and Bob. They're not doing a Creed, okay? They're not, they're not playing that game. They're just literally saying, we're picking up the ball and we're carrying it on. I guess in this case, it'd be a rugby ball because British, but it's what they're doing. Now, when they launched their first line of fragrances back in 2009, there were four. Those ended up being the most popular ones, and when they introduced new ones later, they all got discontinued, but the old ones stayed. So they had Avalon, Black Tea, Vetiver, and Patchouli. With me today for the video, I have Black Tea and Patchouli, which are the two most popular ones. And they are the ones that never go on sale <laughs> for that reason. <laughs> so you're always paying full price for those. But they are the most popular ones. And out of those four original ones, those are the two that will probably get what little talk there is. What little talk there is about the brand. It's patchouli and black tea that are going to get that talk. Now, the other two are quite nice. I like the vetiver. I like the Avalon. The ones that they had that came out later on that got discontinued were Fougere, uh, Napier 1903, and Brightleaf. Fougere was basically a Paco Rabanne pour homme uh, smell alike. So think Patrick, Fragrances of Ireland, think uh, Worth pour homme, think uh, Roger and Galay loam, think Bogart, Eau de Toilette, you know, all of that stuff, just like that. So if you got all those, you don't need the Murdoch Fougere, and it's been discontinued for quite a while now, so if you can even find a bottle, it's not worth whatever they're gonna ask you for it. Bright Leaf was a tobacco leather fragrance, and honestly, it was kind of redundant with black tea because black tea also had a tobacco and leather note in it. So it's what I call brown shoe fragrance. It's a very nice fragrance, but it's a brown shoe fragrance, so they don't need two of those. I can understand why, why Brightleaf kind of uh, bit the big one after a couple of years. Now, Napier 1903, that one has come and gone multiple times. The original round bottles that the brand had, it was introduced as one of those, then discontinued. Then when they switched to green bottles, round green bottles, when they all went to green bottles, they brought it back. Then it went away again. Now, as of this year, 2024, with the new whiskey flask bottles they've had since about 2017, I'd say, 18. So it's not new, new. We're talking like six years ago. But since six years ago, the new bottles they have, the whiskey flask bottles, they have brought back the Napier 1903. But now they just call it Napier. There is no 1903. 1903 is gone. This fragrance uh, currently is only available in 50 mil bottles, which, which irks me because I have all 100 mil bottles from this house. But they brought it back as a 50 mil only. And my guess is they're probably test marketing it to see how well it does. And if people buy it enough, they'll probably put it in the 100 mil. But until then, they just kind of don't want to waste producing a whole bunch of it since they are a very tiny house. They are so small that their bottles almost never end up in the gray market. Never. Like you, you go on eBay, you go on Mercari, you go on Etsy, you will be hard pressed to see a listing of a Murdoch fragrance. And when you do, it's someone who had it bought for them and don't want it, or bought it themselves and used it once or twice and then decided they want to move it on. So it's not getting into the gray market discounters. It's not getting into the usual flippers and resellers. It's not. It is a very tightly controlled uh, chain of commerce for this house. And the only time you will find their bottles 
in discounters is if it's a private owner selling the bottle. And even sites like Amazon that carry the brand, it's the brand with their own storefront on Amazon. So you go to Amazon looking for Murdoch and it's sold by Murdoch. <laughs> Amazon fulfills the order for you, but it's sold by Murdoch. So yeah, you are not getting these really. You're not getting these at Fragrance X or Fragrance Net or Parf, uh, Perfume.com or whatever. You're not. So it's for those of you who want a good deal, I know it kind of sucks. You don't like having to pay full price, but that's really the only way you're getting them. Every so often, Murdoch will do a sale. Like I said, the ones that don't sell that well, they will sell off. So every so often, Vetiver will go on sale. Every so often, Avalon will go on sale. But the big ones they sell the most of, just patchouli and uh, black tea, good luck. Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Mostly, you got to pay to play if you want those. Now, since this is a barber brand, I would be remiss if I did not mention their shave products, being a wet shaver myself, okay? Now, those of you who are my UK friends and viewers, okay, a lot of you are probably chomping at the bit or seething with rage that a filthy yank like myself would even think to talk about something coming from your country. Well, save your bullets because I don't have anything bad to say about this brand and because they are not an old established brand, I find a lot of British people actually don't have these fragrances. Like a lot of the usual suspects like Sheck and Speak, True Fit and Hill, K, yes, they'll have those Atkinsons, Yardleys, you know, more expensive ones like Geo and Penn, but Floris, but they won't have these, right? And I kind of feel like and this is not me trying to put a stereotype on all British people, but I feel like with the perfume brand, nobody really wants to touch them until they're at least half a century old or somewhere thereabouts. Like it's the old, the oldness of the brand that makes it appealing for the British fragrances. If they've been around for 20 years, oh, that's, the, that's still a whippersnapper young brand. They have to earn their stripes. I can't even touch them and see what they're about. I, I need to go and buy my 19th century stuff over here. And I'm like, that's fine. I mean, it's cool. I love that whole, you know, reject modernity, embrace tradition thing. I mean, I love a lot of classic fragrances too. A lot of old houses, Guerlain, Caron, you name it. Okay, Avon's been around since the 19th century also, if you really want to go there, okay. But I like giving the younger brands a chance if they have something to offer. So I am actually saying to my UK viewers, what few of you are out there, if you've heard of this brand, but you've kind of put a block on them because they're still new kids on the block and they're like, uh, uh, oh, 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 they don't have the right stuff. Well, I'm telling you to maybe sniff some of them. Yeah, they are a bit expensive. You know, I get it. They, they, they do cost a bit and you can't get them discounted easily. But at very least, you can check them out right? Give them a fair shakedown like I try to do with everything, right? So now, if you've smelled a lot of, you know, GF Trumper stuff, a lot of D.H. Harris stuff, I would say Murdoch most closely resembles those, the D.H. Harris's, the GF Trumpers. Penn Halligan's, like I said, is off the deep end somewhere with all their ouds and crap, you know, and all of their portraits collections and stuff. They're not really doing what they used to do anymore. Floris is still a bit more fancy, gussied up. I wouldn't compare them to Floris, but I would definitely compare them to a D.H. Harris, to a G.F. Trumper. Just maybe uh, quality-wise, a, a step up from the D.H. Harris, quality-wise, and a little more modern than the G.F. Trumpers. The G.F. Trumpers are all using really, really just kind of dyed-in-the-wool, stiff upper lip, Cigar lounge style notes, the really dry pine, the black pepper, okay, the really super dry bracing citruses, very, very, very dry, dry geranium, okay, the birch tar smoke, a lot of them, heavy oak moss, and I love that stuff. I love my GF Trumpers, I love my Eucharist, I love my Wellington, okay, Marlboro, but I do like when you can take that classic, uh, you know, mutton chops, 
stovepipe hat style, and you can merge it with a little bit of modernity, a little bit, enough to keep it interesting, right? So it feels traditional and it feels proper, culturally legitimate, but they're not afraid to work with some transparent modern materials. They're not afraid to get their hands dirty with some white mosques, you know, stuff like that. And that's what I like about this brand. Now, getting on with the scents they have, which are still the original four, like I said, the other ones that came later were all discontinued. <clears throat> of the four, my favorite is probably going to be the patchouli, which is a bit misleading because if you look at my base notes, you've seen I've worn Avalon more than any of them, but that was my first bottle and I bought it because it matched the shaving products. But since then, the patchouli has become my favorite. Maybe the, the wares will catch up to it eventually. Only time will tell. But the reason why I like the patchouli is the patchouli, it takes that Terre de Hermes style and it also takes that old Givenchy gentleman style with the oily patchouli and it merges them together. So if you like the very camphoraceous, transparent, terpene heavy patchouli that you find in something like Terre de Hermes, but you also like that deep, the rich, the oily patchouli that is in the, the Givenchy Gentleman, you would have crossed those streams like the Ghostbusters fighting the, uh, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, you would walk away with this. You get that big blast of that really terpene vibe, you get the patchouli, but then you get a little bit of the oiliness. You also get a dry woodiness in here. There's a little bit of rose, a little bit of geranium, and then black pepper. Black pepper is what makes this feel so British to my nose because it, the black pepper feels just like a D.H. Harris uh, Marlboro cologne. Feels just like Geo F. Trumper Wellington cologne. Feels just like a classic Penhaligon's Blenheim bouquet. All of those, Blenheim, Marlboro, Wellington, all have black pepper in them, all of them. And so does this. So you are taking that black pepper British cologne opening and you're mixing it with the patchouli, with the woods, with a little bit of rose and giving you that oily facet in the base. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It, it, for me, it works. <clears throat> now, the next one I like a lot is the black tea. The black tea is a little bit misleading because it doesn't really smell like black tea all that much. A little bit, yeah. I mean, it's in the same neighborhood as a Te Noir 29 by Le Labo where it's got that really, you know, stiff kind of black tea vibe, but it gets way more complex than that. So this is arguably more complex than a $300 fragrance. <clears throat> so this black tea, you get that black tea note but then you also get a bit of dry tonka, which suggests tobacco. You get birch tar, which gives you a Russian leather vibe. You get castorium. The castorium also imparts a leather vibe. The birch smoke and the castorium alone together really give you a classic manly feel, which when you top it with those tea leaves and that dry tonka, just, this just makes you feel like you want to wear some kind of like tweed jacket with shoulder pads. You want to drive like a Rover or something while you're smoking a cigar with your little uh, hat on. And you know, you've got like a uh, Burt Baccarat or Tom Jones cranking in your Rover stereo and you're driving through the hillside on the way to some lodge somewhere, right? To go shoot some elk. Okay. That's what you're doing. <laughs> so, and it's a really nice fragrance. Now, the others that I also like, but not to the same extent, Vetiver, don't have that bottle with me, but it looks just like these. The Vetiver has been interesting. Uh, it's a bit sweeter and rounder than I would think it should be, but you know, it's still very nutty, very grassy. It feels like the same kind of Vetiver that the uh, Eau de Vetiver by Givenchy, the classic Givenchy Vetiver, it's that kind of Vetiver, so it's nutty, grassy, not smoky, not sharp, not bitter. Okay. It's not Javanese. All right. It is very much that vetiver bourbon style vetiver, rounded, nutty, warm, 
But then they put a twist of licorice in there, which is probably the British thing once again. But there's a twist of licorice in there, a nice amber profile, and a certain warm woodiness in the base. So once it all dries down, it feels like vetiver, but it's very smooth and polished. It's not smoky, not sharp. It's not going to wrinkle your nose at all. But I understand for some people, they want a bit more of a straight, pure vetiver with a sharper edge. They're going to want the guirlande. They're going to want the carbon. They're going to want that sort of feel. Or they're going to want the gray vetiver, like Tom Ford, where it's very dry. Okay. And the... British Cologne House, surprisingly, is not making a very dry vetiver. It's a bit rounder, a bit sweeter. But for me, it works. I like it. And then last but not least, there is Avalon. Avalon is the scent of all the shaving products. This is why I saved it for last. If you like their shave cream, if you like their uh, aftershave balm, their pre-shave oil, all the associated products, they smell like Avalon, which is a bergamot, narrowly, lavender, oak moss, and white musk fragrance. So it's almost like you're taking a fragrance like a classic British cologne, but then you're putting a bit of an MFK twist on the base by making some transparent white musks in there. But it still has the lavender, still has a narrowly, the sour, tart bergamot up top. It does not smell like any of the aqua scents by MFK. It does not smell like an ambroxan bomb, but it does have that transparency underneath that gives it just enough modern feel that it feels traditional, but it also feels relevant. And because it's the same scent that's in all of their shaving stuff, if you've ever gone and gotten a shave there or you bought the stuff and use it at home, it's the perfect finishing touch for all of that. So you use your Murdoch shave cream, your shave oil, once you're all done, you put on the Murdoch balm, you're ready to go out the door, you spray on one or two shots of that Avalon, and it just kind of crowns it off. And then that's it. You're good. And there you guys have it. That is really my lowdown on the house of Murdoch. Now, I will say one thing. The older versions of these flask bottles, which came out in 2017, just say Murdoch London on them. But at some point between then and now, they added barbers of london so i guess they want you to know that they're barbers <laughs> when you bought this in a nordstrom or some place like that right or amazon you didn't necessarily know that it was a barber shop they just saw that so now they really want you to know that they are barbers they are really putting it up there I, I guess you know as if it wasn't obvious enough now the original boxes for these were just these square boxes you pull the thing off inside a bag take it out of the bag so it was, it was almost, like a, almost like a Montal presentation, right? They've since gone to a very goofy, gaudy, and I'm going to show you the box real quick before I wrap this up. They've gone to a really goofy, gaudy packaging that I don't really like. My most recent purchase uh, came in this particular box, and it's this. And when you open it up, you get a playing card in there, and then the bottle sits in this little cutout. So it looks almost like they're trying to do a Raja Dove thing, but on the cheap. So it's cheaply done, expensive packaging. So it justifies the $130 price point, I guess. But for me, I just feel like you're spending $130. Bucks, you're going to get a bottle of cologne. You're going to stick somewhere in your collection. This big-ass goofy box. It's not wood. It's not velvet. You have no reason to keep these materials lying around. I only kept this to show you guys what it looks like. But it's, it's a waste. But that's a small ding. The rest of the brand is fantastic. If, if overwrought packaging is the only thing they're guilty of, then that's, that, that, that can only be a good thing, right? There are so many other things that could have gone wrong with the brand. If the packaging is the only mess up, then so be it. Go back to a simpler box, guys. We don't want all that. Okay, that's been it. My rundown on Murdoch. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.